Take a look at these two welds here. Both of these look pretty good, but which one is better? And which one might have some problems lurking underneath? Let's take a look at this one here first. This is what is commonly known as a weave pass. These are pretty common around the industry. They're used in a lot of situations with different types of TIG welding. You see them all the time online. They can look amazing. Typically, these are used when a wider gap needs to be filled up with welding, or in some cases, if you are capping over a weld that might be underneath. Here's how it is done. Typically, somebody can either walk the cup like this motion here. But to be honest, typically I never do this with aluminum. The reason being is that aluminum is a much softer of a metal. So you could be walking the cup laying down a really nice looking weave pass, but at the same time scratching it with the edge of your cup. Here's what I personally prefer to do, as well as what I teach people to do when I am training them in my programs. I basically do the exact same pattern with movement, but I am free handing it. It relies a lot more on the motions of my hand. However, in this circumstance, I don't scratch the surface and I find it much easier to teach people how to feed the filler material into the weld. As well as I also love how I can just generally see things a lot better as far as visibility. Okay, let's fire up the machine here. I am going to use the Cano Weld 201 Pulse Pulse D TIG machine. You see me using this thing all the time. I love it. It's dead simple. It's a crazy bang for your buck. Check it out. All right, as we get going, we can take a look at another technique that people use. I love doing this one, but in this circumstance, we can still cover the exact same amount of space as they would with a big weave pass. However, this is something that I was taught that is called a split weave pass. You can see that it is basically a really hot pass with essentially no weaving action, and the high heat is compensated by a proper amount of filler material material, but the difference is that this time, instead of doing one big weave pass once, we're going to do a couple of these nice, hot, and proper passes a couple of times. Putting these things next to each other, they're going to equal the exact same thing that we would get if we used a weave pass, and you can see some differences with the overall technique. This can look a little more refined and organized, yet we still have the same coverage as we would with a weave pass. Now, which one would you prefer to do? Or which one would you pick if you were having this done for a project that you are working on? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing what people think. Now, personally, I would pick this one here all day. That's right, the split weave would be my pick every time over the single weave. Let's go over some reasons as to why. I don't wanna pick on anybody's personal preferences that they may have, but check out this pass right here. I want you to take a look at where each step has been made as it advances along the welding pass. Here, here, then the next row here, here, and then it carries on and on as you can see. Now, I want you to take a look at something really important here. And this is gonna be the amount of space in between each one of these steps. Take a look at it for yourself here. Now, taking a look at the other pass here now, and we can see the dabs as we move along the pass for each step that we take. Okay, interesting, you see what I'm getting at here? Compare these two examples side by side now. Look at the amount of overall coverage they have compared to one another. The coverage is pretty much exactly the same, but the gaps in between the steps on the weave leave a lot of space in between. Okay, interesting, Mr. Sleepy West Coast Canadian dude, but what does this mean? Well, let's pretend this pass is now stretched out into a single lane instead of a weave. Looking at the diagram here, do you see the gaps in between each step? This is something that I talk about in my episodes all the time. And this actually has its own section in my TIG welding workbook that you can download for free. The link is in the description below. And this is gonna be the section on stepping distance. You can see what happens when the puddles get spread out too far apart. We can obviously see that we lose the line on the edge as you can see highlighted here. But the main thing that starts to happen when we increase the distance in between each step is the arc is gonna lose more and more focus as bigger steps are taken. This is essentially a space where no filler material is going to be added. And this is gonna be the spot where the penetration is going to be compromised. When stepping along with a single pass like this here, I would absolutely never step this far apart. So taking a look at this weave here again, you can understand why I wouldn't be okay with having this much space. We could very well compromise the amount of penetration or arc focus that we want to have with our weld. Now, as I talked about, typically a weave pass is going to go over top of a root pass that will be underneath. In this case, a weave is basically just going to be used to fill up a gap. The root is absolutely the most important part. So that being done, properly is the key. But I think that you can see after considering what we just talked about, why I would ideally want to do my root pass first, then do one half of a fill pass over top to make sure everything stays nice and tight and filled up properly. And then after that, going back and doing the second half of it. 
Here I will be able to keep my steps, again, nice and tight. I'm gonna keep my filler material matched really well with the amount of heat that I'm using. I'm gonna have more arc focus with a much better chance of consistent and proper penetration. Now, in the past with some of my work, I have been known to throw down some weave passes. Come on, they're sweet. I wanna have fun too. So I found a way that I can do them with a different technique and take care of all the issues and concerns that we've talked about here. And it all comes down to the pattern of the movement. Check it out. Here is what's common here. You can see this pattern of a typical weave pass. Kind of looks like a zigzag. And as we talked about, you can see how this can leave room for those naughty problems to occur that we talked about. Now here's where I change everything about how I do a weave pass. See this pattern? It looks a lot different, hey? Instead of the zigzag pattern like we're looking at here, you can see that my pattern has no diagonal movement. All of the movements are square to the travel direction. This gets rid of the diagonal movement completely. It's a bit of a movement or a technique that takes a little bit to wrap your head around. What you're gonna do is start on one side, then you're gonna move over. After that step, you're gonna move forward, no diagonal motion, then you're gonna move over, then you're gonna move back, then take another step forward and you just repeat this process. What we've done is eliminated the diagonal motion completely. You can see by doing this that I can now step a lot closer with my stepping distance and motion. And we can see that without a diagonal motion, the chances of the gaps occurring in between the stepping are much less. You do wanna make sure that you keep an eye on the toes of the weld or the edges. You wanna make sure that the width overall stays consistent from start to finish. And you wanna make sure you keep the reinforcement consistent. But this is a pattern that I prefer 100% of the time over a diagonal movement. Now, of course, you see super great weaving with stuff like this on steels. And again, this is all from a cup walking technique. I love it. And here are the reasons why in this case, I would be absolutely cool with these ones happening the way they did. Number one, the stepping is nice and tight as it progresses along the welding pass. We don't have any super wide gaps in between each puddle. And two, these are typically almost always fill passes or caps that go over a proper route that is underneath. Take a look at this one here. This is a photo that I took back in like 2012 or something when I went to welding school. I was doing a fill pass over a route you can see I still have a lot to go with this one. It's a big joint to fill up, but you can see that I did freehand it. I have no cup walking. And again, no shade at all at cup walking. Like I said, I just don't wanna scratch my stuff when I'm doing aluminum and I just prefer to do it freehand. I can keep things nice and tight like we talked about. And after doing this for years and years professionally, I'm either gonna use a pattern like this to keep things nice and tight and consistent, or I'm gonna do it with a split weave pass as I prefer to do. Again. Which one do you prefer? Are you on team weave or team split? Either one is completely fine, providing you think about the stuff that we talked about in this episode here today. Make sure you go download my workbook in the description below. It's completely free. You are gonna love it and make sure you do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I am Dusty James, Phil and Chill. We'll talk soon, peace.